Yes. So, how's your week been? We how's your week been? It's been okay. It's been kind of torturing, but it has been somewhat okay. I've been doing a lot of studying and whatnot. And oh yeah, now whenever I work, remember I used to say that I see a lot of evil things in my job now. Like manifesting in, like yeah. the cutting board and in the walls and all that kind of stuff. Their faces, whenever I walk by them now, they're scared of me. I don't know why. They never did that before. Not once. The spirits? Yeah. Now they're scared of me. I don't know why. How do you know they're scared of you? The faces they make. When I let them, their eyes are ready to bug out in fear. <laughs> I never see them do that before. Not once. Oh, no. He figured us out. We're all around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pretty much, yeah. If it's not that, it's something else. But now they're just scared. They won't even come near me now. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Um, once you, they realize, you realize there's certain, I guess, games that they they do. And until you get to the point where, um, I mean, it's like me. I, I see. You know what things they do this time of year is they, um, they mess with the leaves of the trees and the plants. And they'll make faces. And you'll see it, and you go, okay, that cannot be, it's not paradox, it's with my own eyes, I'm seeing it, and that, <clears throat> they follow those leaves, and that, and such, to make a mouth and a face, and eyes, and you just go, okay, that's what they do, and then, and yeah. I don't know, part of it, I think they're trying to scare you, I think the other part, they're trying to get your attention, I think another part is, like, you know, coming to terms with a the spiritual realm and that it's real it's um you know i hear a lot of people what their opinions are about the whole thing but when you experience it for yourself you realize that the the spiritual realm that's all around us has an infinite number of different entities or entities and what they look like it's like a whole ecology uh, biome atmosphere of them of their own existence is right they're parallel with us so people say it's, it's just ghosts and you know maybe after everything because if we come to terms with the fact that jesus did fulfill all things like he promised and that now we because of what he's done you and i can have personal relationship with heavenly father which before that before him doing everything we couldn't but because he redeemed mankind, we now could have a personal relationship with Heavenly Father. And right. on top of that, um, understanding that and coming to terms with the fact that how magnificent of a creator he actually is. It's not religion. It's not nothing about religion. And that the creation is huge. It's vast. And I guess once you come to terms with it, I mean, try not to, My thinking is this. Some people have their own approach, and I don't think it's very healthy from what I'm seeing what they do. The people that they, they call it gifting, which really is a form of idolatry, whether they realize it or not. And in trying to entice them and to interact with them. And my thinking is just coming to terms with they're, they're there. Just like, let's say, bugs are all around us. If we think of them like bugs... A lot of them are small, or extremely small. Uh, and so you're not really going to be spending all your time uh, trying to befriend or have a, a, a relationship with mosquitoes and flies and um, whatever bugs, you know what I mean? For the most right. part, you know, it's cool they're there. If they leave me alone, that's all right. They're not in my house, that's okay kind of thing, you know what I mean? The part of the creation. Um is as is, is, is normal as the baby bunny right now that's running uh, to and fro from my uh, front yard in and out of the, the wild gardens that we have. It's just part of God's creation, right? They're uglier than hell. And I do believe that um, you can cross the line with these things uh, through trying to interact with them, inviting certain some of them that are willing to infest you if you've you know people for 
f to this day, all cultures have subcultures of men and women who literally marry themselves off to these things. I honestly think a lot of what Genesis 6, what happened then, is exactly what we're witnessing and we're waking up oh, to. Oh, wait, yeah. Now, I'm not saying Nephilim in the sense that other people think. I'm, th I'm saying, like, when the sons of, of God saw the, the women were fair, fair like fair game, or pleasing to the eye in the sense that they could use them just like they used Eve to deceive Adam from the fall. It's the same idea where these women back then as today allow these things to infest them to get supernatural powers wisdom over other people you know what i mean mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that that they're willing to do just about anything and to get ahead of the game get ahead of you know the joneses to be on top of the heap and if it means selling your soul to these things we say figuratively it may be literally then so be it and they do do it and then it seems like the power structure the ruling elite know about these things the bible talks about the groves and the groves and, and um i think that that's really what we're dealing with it's kind of like uh, it's, it's just it's crossing the line it's going too far with God's creation, basically what it is, and it's allowing human beings to allow it to happen. Now, once they allow that to happen, and they get this new insights on how to create evil inventions and how to manipulate, control people, enslave people in order for so they can have a better life, and they don't care at your expense. So there's a trade-off, right? There's always a trade-off in this world, always, and so. And this is I'm just this is life according to Mike and what I've seen. This is not biblical or anything like that. Those who say nay, go ahead, that's fine. But from my own observation, it seems very clear that these uh, men of renown, giants, were not just necessarily, literally physical giants, but giants in the sense that they were given um, extra nor out of or the ordinary skills and abilities in order to manipulate control others does that make sense yeah so it's a form of witchcraft that's been going on forever just like when eve and the garden started interacting with satan a fallen angel and listening to satan instead of god it still goes on today you know what i mean to this very day literally you can look it up and you can research it every single country every spiritual culture has subcultures of men and women who literally go through rites and rituals and marriages to things they'll call they'll say it's zeus or it's apollyon or they say or maybe even the devil himself and in fact what they're being infested with is not the devil because the devil's already conquered he's in the lake of fire it's these things that you and i are witnessing and that other people are witnessing and a lot of people are calling them Bigfoot and all this other stuff. I call them Bigfoot only to interact with them, but they're not Bigfoot. They're spirits. And they, um, they're they definitely more active in the humid. They're more uh, easier to see. And they're more humid and, uh, and warmer the, the temperature is. I've been watching people who are using water and plastic like in plastic jugs or plastic sphere or whatever and which the water inside it when they're filming it in the daylight reflects these entities kind of like what they did in the past you know with whirlpools and anyway this whole thing about like uh, sitting water you'll see w w witches and women and those uh, I, I, is it fair to call them witches? Some of them call themselves witches. Those are just, you know, whatever they are. Whatever they want to be called. That's you know what I mean. And they'll have like a standing like pot or, or bowl of water. And, and they'll twirl, twirl it around. They'll film it. And they'll start talking to it and say, hey, come and manifest and all that. And then these things will pop out or show themselves. It's like a window. It's like a mirror. And because 
and this God's creation that we live in, it's what? Human beings are 70, 80% water. Trees are the same. Uh, <clears throat> leaves are the same. There, If we believe what the Bible says, that God divided the waters from the waters and created a firmament to house the sun, moon, and stars were lights for this creation, then there's a possibility the reason why it's blew up in the sky is because it's water. It's just water down below. The atmosphere itself consists of, uh, it all depends. You can hear that, you know, it's, it's going to be 65% humidity today, right? That means there's water. That's how much water is in the atmosphere, right? Understand? So there's a huge connection of these things in water, in all God's creation, and how you see them. So. And it's interesting that you're saying that you're now having the experience of these things are afraid. What are you doing? Are you talking to God? Are you rebuking them? Are you? What are you doing that, they, that you think they're afraid of? Or you just I think they're afraid because you might what talk about them? What? With me, I don't really know what I'm really doing that's making them scared. However, though, a couple of days ago, what I experienced was something that. It's kind of hard for me to put into words, but people kept talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which I think I had. I would talk about God, make sure it's part of the gospel. But then when I had that happen, like I could literally vision the flames like around me, like baptism of the Holy Ghost fire or something like that. And what's weird about that, I was able to feel it too. I was able to feel it like like wind blowing around me and I was inside a building. And then when I was sent by my man to get supplies, which is where first interaction I go up there, these little grimmin looking thing, which now decide to swing up the dang pipe, they see me and they run away. They I can literally hear them screaming and just running away from me and go like, What did I do? Because they never did that to me the whole entire time. They just look at me and they try to mess with me, but now they just look at me and they just run away. No, here's something to think about too, that it's not necessarily the Holy Ghost, but it's actually God's own angels. That maybe there's some kind of protective hedge through God's righteous angels and spirits that are like telling them to knock off. Because sometimes I don't think they're really scared about about us, but they're scared about what's associated with us. If that makes any sense. I think yeah. for the most part they have like I don't know how to say this because the impression is contempt, but I don't know if they think like we do or they think more like creatures themselves. So it's, it, you know, but just remember that God created fear after the flood, right? That all the animals, uh, all of them from fowl to creeping things to the cattle, everything, all of them would have a natural fear of men. And that would explain a deer why they run away when you try to hunt. That would explain that. Yeah, or it's just we, like I go out my porch and look at the birds, you know, put the you know water in the water feeder and all that, and just watch the birds, and you know they'll see me and take off. I'm like, dang, I've been giving you water all these years. You got this environment, <laughs> you see where you get food and all that, and you still don't appreciate me, and because they have a natural fear for us, and it's something that's been implanted in them, and if they have natural fear, it doesn't matter if you're. Man, woman, or child, they'll all have a natural fear against you. You could be 80 years old or 8 years old. It's not going to make a difference. These, uh, nature, God's creation will have a natural fear uh, towards men. Now, could it possibly be that the, the spiritual realm, too, has a certain level of fear towards us only because of what po possibly can be done to them, if it's not from us, but maybe from the spirit realm, you know what I mean? This protective hedge that there has to be, well, there doesn't have to be, but it seems to me that there's good and bad in the spirit realm as well, right? We know there's bad, right? We hear about this all the time, but there's got to be some good as well. I mean, God himself is a spirit, right? So, <laughs> and God is the one who created good and evil. It's not man. What man did through via the Satan is with sin. We fell through sin or rebelling against God, right? We pay the yep. price from that physically. 
But after Jesus reconciled all that, now we have a personal relationship again with God, believe it or not. It's not our physical body. Our physical body is meant to die, but our spiritual body that will live for eternity, you know. As we, yet after this life, we go to the light. And it seems to be, not only water seems to be an issue with seeing these things, but light itself. Is there anything unique in your environment as far as light is concerned? I personally don't know, to be honest. I wouldn't doubt it's there, but I really, really know. Because I'm still trying to recognize certain things because it's still partially brand new. But that's the only way I can just say that, quite honest. Huh. What was that last part again? Did not understand that at all. What would you say? Oh, sorry. What I said was, I don't really know. I got that part. Uh, the very last set. Would... Oh. Let me just do the whole thing because I'm, I'm forgetting myself. I really don't know because I don't know how to recognize certain things yet. Even though I'm beginning to steal the stuff, I don't know how to recognize certain things. Right. Okay. Like, yeah. That's the best way I can describe it, really. Yeah, well, it takes, I think it takes time and experience and interacting with these things. And then just no full 100% certainty in what we're dealing with at all. It's funny watching all these people and everyone and their take on things. Some people think they're aliens. Uh, I was watching, <laughs> I was watching uh, Clyde Lewis from Ground Zero, and he's interviewing a guy, which I hope I might interview. His name is William something William. I have to look at But anyways, he's one of these physicist these um what do they call those things they call them some kind of physicist uh quantum physicist and uh let's see there's two people i want to interview one is derek jester he seems like a, well i've been listening to him and he's very in, he knows the book of revelation he understands the, the new testament the best that i've seen anybody in a long time deliberate to the average person William Lawrence is his name William Lawrence is supposed to be a, a physicist who uses this whole idea of plastic bottles and, and that kind of thing filled with light to film image uh, entities but I wonder um, how I go about this because I mean I could show it and you can see it later but I mean you look at them and they look like aliens and, and and they're like, oh, look, they filmed these aliens. One is, I think, is from from a, a camera supposedly on the moon or something like that, out there in outer space. Supposedly, I don't believe that any of that stuff is actually in outer space. I think it is some somewhere here on Earth, and they're just jiving us. But regardless of whether I'm right or not, these entities that he, that were filmed, they you know, they, I listened to Clyde and him like, oh, these are aliens. These aliens. I'm like, listen, guys, just get real. Those things are super small. They're almost like, could they be what the, the Gnostics were talking about? Uh, uh, <clears throat> about archons, spirits. There seems to be some kind of connection with spirits. What's up in the stars? What's in the sky? What's in orbs? They all seem to be connected, right? With water as well. And these things popping out of the trees and popping out of, as you're seeing right now, because of your environment, coming out of solid things like um, cutting boards and the wall and lamps and <laughs> yeah. everything. everything. But if you're honest about it, and you look at it, they're not very big, are they? Not really. No, they got that big ugly face that looks like you know, camera. <laughs> and on a camera and a camera, you know what I mean. But when you break it down and get honest, these things aren't big. These are not monstrous entities. So, and I also there's something about going on here too. That somehow do are they able to project themselves to make them look bigger than they actually are at time and smaller? What is their actual size and all that? You know what I mean? I mean I filmed entities that uh, filming in the maple tree when it was seeding, and they're around the maple tree seeds and all that, and they're clear as day as entities, and they can't be any bigger than a maple tree leaf, right? And they're flying yep. around and all that. So what are they? 
and there's no way that they don't know about this stuff because if I'm filming this stuff someone else is filming this stuff too and has done it for a while for me to film this stuff I haven't bothered to film it in a while because I've been focusing more on really understanding the book of Revelation and the the, 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 um, the New Testament I really I honestly as offensive as it may be and maybe you don't agree with half of what uh, Derek has shared he's only he's 40 he's a 40 year old man it's funny to listen to him and his understanding of the world he's definitely a 40 year old man he still has got some 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 mojo in him and so he, he you know so he, probably a younger guy like you can relate to him about the mojo part and women and and all that kind of stuff but you know when you get older like me and things happen and that mojo is taken away you realize uh, the life's a lot more different so but that's for another story but the thing is where was I going with this so this <clears throat> I really like to talk to him about that but I think what oh, I'm saying I just got sidetracked what I'm trying to say is I noticed that a lot of my uh, fellow journeyers or people pursuing God's bringing the truth many they call them Christians some people say you can't even be a Christian today technically uh, if you look at Christianity itself as a whole, those who claim to be Christian, it's been nothing but a nightmare for the vast majority of the world, right? With the hundreds of millions and probably billions of people that have been slaughtered in the name of Jesus in the past 2,000 years, <laughs> thanks to the Vatican and Rome and all this other jazz. But, um, and even Protestants, they're involved in all this. Um, the thing is, they don't seem, a lot of people really start to understand what the Bible says, become totally in denial of the spirit realm. Just totally in denial that there's something actually going on around us. You know what I mean? You know, because it, it no longer fits their worldview. And I think it's interesting how me, maybe you, and others, I know, um, are kind of having this parallel journey learning what the truth is God as the same token uh, about the spiritual realm around us and what this world really is and it's trying to get it in line to reality which is then again of course to be anchored on Heavenly Father focus on him while you're doing this remember that he's the one that deserves any kind of gratitude praise and all that kind of stuff so but these things they are bizarre in their faces. They're ghoulish looking. They're monstrous looking. They're scary looking. But at other times, when I film them, they're not so ghoulish looking. They look more like like another biological type creature. If that makes any sense? It does. Now, have you been able to film any bodies, or is it just all heads at this point? Mostly these are heads. Um, I haven't gotten any bodies yet. Cutting board, it was trying to form a body, but I don't think it will able to do it because the most it got up to was basically up to the shoulders. But its head, on the cutting board, I know it was trying to form horns. I saw the thing. It didn't have them. But the next time I looked at it again, I noticed it was trying to form horns. Uh-huh. Well, that's... <laughs> Well, I've seen that before, too. I've seen them try to do all sorts of things. Sometimes I wonder if there are a collection of things trying to form, too. It's not just one entity, but a group of them trying to form some kind of scary face. Now, I've had this experience. I mean, in fact, I had that vision or the uh, encounter I was telling you I was going to have, and then, sure enough, it happened two weeks ago, I believe it was. It had to be two weeks ago. Two Wednesdays, two Wednesdays, two Tuesdays ago, in which it was, it looked like a giant head, but when you really looked at it, it was manifesting. Couldn't film it, but I could see it from my naked eyes. But I was looking at it, and I go, "This not, this is not a entity. This is a group of them trying to con me into thinking this is bigger than than it actually is." In other words, I could tell that there was a group that made up one eye, another one made another eye, another one made a mouth. This is floating in the sky, too, or in the air, you know, project, or at least projecting, pro projecting itself to make it look that way. And, and I'm like, I'm just looking at it, and 
I went to go get my camera and try to take some pictures, and it eventually went away. But I, I mean, I've seen them make faces in the, in the trees, and they're very, they're off. They're not perfect faces, and so they make them look even more scarier than they would if they were a perfect symmetrical or closely to symmetrical face like human beings. What are these things? You know, it's um, something that we've been asking for thousands of years. So, and I, <clears throat> some people, like I said, end up trying to get stuff out of these things, and then they do, and it's always a disaster, isn't it? Always. There's, there's always a trade-off in life. So I guess what I'm trying to say to you is you go through this journey, do not get suckered into, because I know, you know, you're a young man and in this world trying to make your way, working hard, and there's going to be that temptation to um, want to do more with these things. And I just forewarn you that if you do it, expect, expect, consequences <laughs> negative ones ones that you, don't, that you didn't want you might get what you want at first and you're like wow this really works but there's always at the end there's always a payoff and it's so but yeah and here's the thing are you seeing any human faces because I know that a lot of people say that there's ghosts and I've seen some th interesting things about human faces but mine is like they seem to be ensnared or trapped with these things. They're not like buddy buddies. They're, I've seen some priests look at things that look like humans that look like human priests and that kind of stuff. But what have you, what have you seen? Um, as far as I was able to see, I didn't see nothing that looked really human. I haven't seen nothing but the demon faces, and I've seen the. One picture I sent you, it looked like it was trying to form the eye of Cyrus or something like that on the <laughs> wall. It was never there. It was never there until that one day. Now, do you think, it, it, based on the people you're working with, do you think they might be there because of the people you're working with? I personally think so because of the choice they make a little bit. Uh, we have one person there who was basically... Atheist based on nothing to do with scripture or anything. Um, but I think that it actually happened even before he got. Is there anyone else who may be like that? I don't know. I don't understand the thing you said. You try that again, you broke up. Sorry, what I said was um, if there's someone who may be responsible for those things popping up, I have no idea. Because there's like I want to say, I think two Christians there, me and uh, a worker I know of, but um, yeah, other than that, I'm not sure who else was doing it. But... Oh, yes, I know we're here. Yes, right. I don't... <clears throat> Have you done any more walking in the woods and everything like that? Not yet. That's still a plan I actually looking to do because I want to see if it was what I did here but I want to try to do it just like preaching scripture all that because when I was doing a biblical teaching video I noticed that it would be more active I did I'm going okay let's see if that's what it I'm not trying to interact with it enough you guys want to see if that's really how it happened right well I noticed that too is me the more I talk about God the more these things become more interested, uh, you know, they're easier to see and experience. So the more you talk out loud about God and, and um, Holy Father and Lord of all spirits and Jesus and all this kind of stuff, they get very interested. Um, whereas before, are willing to to expose themselves when they, but then again, maybe it's so maybe it's a, it's a mutual, it's a combination of things. We're now more alert, or become more closer to God, and they're more alert, and they're you now trying to do whatever they're going to do. You know what I mean? Right. Is it some protecting us? Some trying to keep us from having a relationship with God? It seems the best seems to be part of their role. It's I, I, I don't think, uh, from what I've heard from a lot of Christians, and people who think that they know what they're talking about. I don't think they know what they're talking about. I think we project a lot of what we've learned on the Bible from 
Sunday school and church onto all this and we're making a dreadful mistake in the sense that um, they're all demons right but at the same token they're not exactly things you really want to bring home to. you know what I mean they're not really good pets <laughs> So what else is new, man? I, I, I guess it seems to, I can notice that you seem to be a little off. I, I, something's going on. So what's going on? In what way? What do you mean? This way, God. Well, I just know it, it just seems to be a bit of distraction. I, I know you said you have things going on around the house and all that. And, no, I'm just seeing what my sister put over here with me. That's why I moved over a little bit. Because she said, you know, I got a box. I'm like, oh, you would have put it. a box my uh, vitamin I have no idea what you're saying, man. I don't know what you're doing wrong, but I think whatever it is, you need to either get the mouthpiece closer to your mouth or something. Okay, how's this? Uh, I well, I can't see you. That's that's. But oh, if, as long as we can hear, as long as we can hear you, that's fine. I mean, I can. What I was saying was I was distracted because my sister's going out, and she said she got a box from me. It was a box of my vitamins. It's part of my suit. That's why I'm distracted because I had no idea what. Well, son of a gun. This might yep. this might just be the end of part two because I'm telling you what, since you've been trying to talk, that's one of the reasons I've been hogging this thing because you keep breaking up. So. I don't have really a microphone for this thing either. Well, I don't know if it's that or just a bad connection on top of it. So. Hang on, let me try something. Hang on. Looks like he just uh, get a message for high quality. So I like Brandon. Brandon's a nice young man. I and I, I have um, hope he, he um, he's got a journey, and, and he's got a great journey. And, you know, I, I'm coming to the point in my life where forcing or trying to change people is not my job. So. Okay, is that any better? Uh, well, sounds better for now, yeah. I don't know why, but apparently my Wi-Fi thing was interfering with it. So I don't know what it was doing. Huh. Let's see. But anyways, I... are you able to hear me and see me okay? Yeah, I'm trying to see. It says, I'm trying to, there's two screens, and if I share screen two... Will that allow me, you, well, let me share screen one. Oh, oh, there we go. Whoa. Can you see something? Yeah, I can see the screen now. I can see me on top of that. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens when I expand this. <clears throat> if I stop this, what happens when I stop this? Did it change? Stop share it stopped sharing the screen. Okay. I don't know. I was thinking about showing, sharing some images of entities, but maybe we'll do it to give them a, a, another chance. I've been a bit off too this week myself. Actually, maybe it's just me that's been off. Because a lot of things that I've learned from this young man, um, Eric, or Derek, excuse me, um, has really uh, made me to really think, think even harder about my faith in Heavenly Father and in Jesus and my understanding of the Bible. And so, and it's kind of it's making me tired, I think. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I, I think we, we talked about a few things, but I don't think we really imparted any great information. But that's okay. We'll just make this part two. I think I've had enough too myself. Maybe I should take a nap. Probably. I was sleeping like on top day. Well. So, anyways, what you, what big plans do you got for this week? Anything? Uh, my plan is to go to my um little brother's birthday party, which is why I am not making any money this week because I will go out to that, spend some whatever, get stuff. But also, after that, go back to studying the Bible that uh, based on that. What I wanted to do also is read more of the 
book of Enoch, which I dropped the phone at the time read that book. Good while. It's a very interesting book, you know what I mean? Um, definitely. I mean, that's where I get the idea of Lord of All Spirits from the book of Enoch myself, but... And you definitely will learn a little bit at the beginning, at first, about the the fallen angels, the 200 and that fell and all that. And then a big connection with all that, with what we call Jerusalem in that area, where, where the Jews and where the people, all the followers of, of Jesus and the, the Messiah and of any father, felt that the center of the earth was there, you know, and that's where they all congregated. That's where Jerusalem would be, so... Anyways, that's be good. So, um, next ones I got, I got Book of Jubilees, The Lost Books, and Josh. That's going to be after Enoch. You know, I'm trying to read the book, of the Old Testament, and uh, I have to be honest with you and everyone else. I find the book of Old Testament to be tedious. But it might, it might be different now that I have a better understanding of the New Testament and how they, a lot of what the the phraseology that you find in the New Testament comes straight out of the Old Testament, right? Because that's the only book they read back then. That was the only thing they had. That's the only thing that they were educated by. They, you know, they all went to the synagogue and were heard the, 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 the Torah and the message of the, um, the prophets of the Old Testament. But what I was thinking is like, you know, it really what I hate about the Old Testament is like, for instance, the story of Adam and Eve. This is a very big, momentous part of the history, right? If it's true, which I believe it is. Yeah. Why only have a couple chapters? And why be so almost cryptic about it? Well, how about the, the, the story of Noah? Massively important, epic part of the history of mankind in which God passes judgment on all of creation on earth. Only the promise later he never would do it again. So if people think that this place is going to burn up, you better study your Bible because you'll see in chapter end of chapter seven and chapter eight that God makes it very clear that He would never curse the land again for man's wickedness. But that's not the right word to say. There's only evil in man's heart from the day of his youth or something like that. And so, but He didn't only curse man; He cursed the animals. Now, some people say it's genetic engineering, right? It's all speculation. Yeah, it's all speculation. We have no idea how all creation got corrupted. Because we're talking all of creation. And even then, the only one that he found righteous out of all of them was, was Noah. Oh. It wasn't his sons. It wasn't his son's wife. So it wasn't even Noah's wife. And on top of that, the animals that they, they brought with them whether unclean or clean, they could all, they had to all be corrupt because God said they were all corrupt. Right? Unless I misunderstand anything. I mean, this is a big story. <laughs> they would shed a lot of light and we have only a few chapters on it and most of it is about like the dimensions of the ark. And I'm thinking, okay, great. It's made of gopher wood. Great. What about all the other information? You know what I mean? Or how about Abraham and Abraham's life and he's walking in the wilderness. Now the Mormons have a book of Abraham, but I wouldn't trust that because it came from Joseph Smith. But and then, you know, and there's other books that talk a little bit about Abraham and all that. But that's an epic story of Abraham walking in the wilderness alone with God. Massive, so little. Uh, Jacob they said and a little bit. With the, uh, I'm sorry, they said with the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, which I believe is in the Rockefeller Museum or something like that, they said it talked a little bit more about what Abraham was doing and stuff like that, that supposedly was not in the Bible, but I don't really know. I didn't know Rockefeller's had a museum, but if it's in the Rockefeller Museum, I wouldn't trust that at all then, because Rockefeller's been instrumental. A steering and too. guiding the Christianity and corrupting it even more in the past hundred years than any other institution in the United States. By far. The number amount of money that they have, uh, have given to all these different cults, whether it's Alcoholics Anonymous to all the other uh, churches or even the Catholic Church. And, I mean, as long as they 
shut up about certain things where I keep your mouth shut about certain things and only talk about other things and not talk fully about what the Bible has to say or the book of Enoch or whatever you know so I don't know about that I don't I would not trust anything coming out if there's a Rockefeller in museum <laughs> I wouldn't trust it in fact I don't even know anymore you know it's God's really working with me in these latter days of my life and I just Revealing to me that there really is a spiritual realm. There really is a heaven. There really is worth a place going there. And I want to go there with him. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, while I'm here, I'm like, how, how, how does one embrace or even accept what's all around you from all the corrupt jobs, all the corrupt... It's, it's like... An endless minefield of BS. <laughs> That's the best way to say it. Don't you think? Yep. You, ever, you ever notice that? It's like, where? So, I don't know. Seems to me a guy like you who still has health and all that. It might be interesting to see you, or other like you, get out there in the field again, as they say. Talk to God out loud. Talk about God and... Pay attention to what's paying attention to you. And help us to realize what's really going on. You know what I mean? You have the capacity. Maybe that's the reason why I'm talking to you. I was wondering, why Why did God get us together? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe not. I don't know. But maybe right now it is at least. Then get out there. Just do some filming. Film those trees. Film those woods. Talk about God. Get honest. I noticed another thing they're really interested in, in the spirit realm, whether good or bad, is how sincere you are. Honesty, I think, is one of the most important things in order to get back to God. More than anything else is to be 100% honest on what you know, who you are, and where you're at. And don't be trying to preach to people too much in the world. Get honest about who you are. You know what I mean? Where you are and where you want to go. I wonder if they would ch to change things a little bit. Not so much focus on them as just being open out loud. Honesty is a huge issue. God doesn't, I, from what I can tell in heaven, he's not going to want to be around any liars. Murderers. <laughs> and um, deceivers. <laughs> idolaters. What's that? Almost. I... I I know whoremongers, that's one thing. Whatever whoremonger is. And I know No, I said homo. Yeah, well it's collectively it's all that, right? It's it's oh. sexual perversion. Taking yeah. pa yeah. sex past a certain point. Because sex can be used as a tool as well. In order to control other people. And a lot of times what our sex drive is not based on love at all. It's about exploiting another person. Regardless whether gay or straight or whatever you know what I'm saying and yeah. there's another thing too I don't think it was we you and I have too much business in what other people do it's important what we do and what God wants us to do does that make sense yeah so there's a lot of, I see a lot of Christian br brothers who spend a lot of time focusing on the homos and I'm like why they're going to still do what they're going to do you're not going to change them so focus on changing yourself and getting right with God and getting closer to God because the rest of the world is going to do what they're going to do. You know what I mean? God's given us all free will and everyone's going to go the direction they want to go. And um, I would wonder, knowing that God creates uh, men for different reasons, at times, very wicked men, he allows to, to, to rise to the top and other pass judgment on rebellious like maybe even um, well I would say Christians Christians are, are followers of God right maybe not even Christians yeah. just those who rebel against him you know you're going down the right direction you're starting to be geared with the spirit of God and he's starting to talk to you and talk to you in dreams and talk to you and this and that and reveal you things and then you go and rebel against them or push back against them to the point you don't want anything to do with them. And there's I think there's times that God's 
does allow judgment to have fallen those who don't want them, even today. And they use uses evil men. And he allows people to be evil, gay, whatever you want to say. You know what I mean? For, for, is the potter and the clay to use them for the vessels for, for destruction or for good? So, it's, I think that's one of the things we're going to learn as followers of God is that we follow God. We don't focus on what other people do. We will not, and therefore, when we see things happening that are contrary to the Spirit, they will, we will go in an opposite direction. But saying that, the same token, you know, it's like you and I might not understand why somebody wants to have somebody else's poop on their penis. But we can't explain that. We, you don't know. You know what I mean? I know that sounds yeah. really simplistic, but that's what it comes down to, folks. And it is, and then ejaculating in the rectum and all that. And it's power. There's a lot of people that practice the very dark arts and what's this satanic stuff or Aleister Crowley type of stuff, where sodomy is part of rituals in order to gain power. Right. Sex like, magic. Yeah. So, and then a lot of people think it's all normal. You gotta understand, a lot of these people, too, end up, like, going where they're going is... I mean, there's... There's something serious... You know, your our lives are, are a struggle. But just imagine how other people's lives are a struggle, too. And just to find some meaning and purpose in this world. A lot of people end up going in the other direction of what's best for them and go completely self-destructive in every way, shape, and form, right? And they find other people, the companionship to go along with it, you know what I mean? And yet, I look at them, I'm like, you know, why are you doing this? I don't think they can even help it. It's kind of like people are schizophrenic and you find out later that they're literally, they're possessed by some these spirits. You know what I mean? Yep. So it's something to think about. I mean, when I'm not saying it's right, I'm just saying it's not, but it's it's even probably even worse for us to go around focusing on them and judging them because, man, if you if you're able to film these things and you're starting to God's starting to reveal this to you, this means they're all over the place. That also means they're, they're they have to be in a whole bunch of people who have become. Yeah, that one time I was I was able to film like a swatch, but that one time I heard a wood knock. If you were to listen to that, it's there, but faint. I don't know why it was faint, but it was loud. But, but I did not, would not. And the whole entire time I would go to as a kid, I never heard the talk that very day. Huh. Dude, we're going to have to end this. We'll have to try it another time, but you're like breaking up. This is the second time. I don't know what's going oh, on in your location. But you're like, you sound like a little baby, like a kid. My, oh, oh, oh. You know, I, can't, I can't hear you, you know what I mean? So, yeah. anyways, looking forward to you doing a video. Hopefully do a video this week. Get it out on your internet, your YouTube channel. Let's see what your adventures are. And uh, we'll go from there. Let's talk again next week. Uh, I'm good, glad you were willing to spend some time with me. I don't know if I... Stem, put any thoughts of for you to think about but for me i got a few things to think about from this so one of the things i need to take a nap <laughs> so all right man we'll talk to you there all righty it's good talking to you actually you know this turned out to be 55 minutes anyway so or 50 minutes so it turned out to be a, a, a lot longer than i thought it would be so anyways uh should we post this? Yeah, go ahead. Let's let's do it. I mean, if someone gets an education out, then let's just do it. All right. At least people might get to know you. Once again, folks, it's the Bill. It's Billinger family, Bellinger, I should say. And it looks like. Where are you at? Where did I put the Bellinger family? Where are you? Where are you? That's not it. Where is it? Oh, um, I'll be able to be found on YouTube. And I might have another place I can put myself up on. I don't know where, but now I'm on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know what you were talking about before. I thought you were just trying to find it on your 
thing. I'm going, I like, was. Oh, I was, but I got lost. So, anyways, we'll talk again next week, hopefully, huh? All right. I'll go ahead and go. Then you go ahead and take yourself a nap. I am. All right, man. I'm talking <laughs> to you. I had my son this weekend, and it takes a lot out of me, man. He, I bet. He's 11, and he's almost 11, and he's full of energy. And, like, I'm dying, and he's full of energy. So he just got himself a new rat again. And, um, well, anyways, a lot of things to talk about. All right, we'll talk to you later, man.